yes. When he saw you before, he was here to engage lodgings for us. He only stayed the one night. Oh, I see. He, your brother dances very well. <laughs> yes. And he is very amusing. Yes, he is, when he cares to be. Do you know that gentleman talking to Mr. Tilney? That's our father, General Tilney. He looks as if he were displeased with us. It is only his way. And is your mother here with you in Bath as well? Our mother is dead. So this is your first time in Bath. Do you like it? Very much indeed. There are some very pretty walks around about. Henry and I walk most mornings. Should you care to join us one day? Yes. More than anything in the world, I love long walks. Though I can't persuade my friend to join me. She thinks it's a waste of time when there's so many other things to do in town. I can see that she might. <laughs> in that case, shall we say tomorrow at 12, unless it rains? Yes, Catherine. You simply must hear this. Come quickly. Excuse me. Make haste, Miss Morland. Put on your hat. There's no time to lose. We are going to drive to Blaze Castle. Mr. Thorpe. How do you do, Miss Allen? My sweet as Catherine. Isn't this delightful? Blaze Castle. Nothing could be more romantic. Yes, I'm sure, but I'm very sorry. I can't come with you. I'm expecting Miss Tilney and her brother to call on me to take a country walk. Uh, not they. I saw him but five minutes ago. Doesn't he drive a phaeton with a pair of chestnuts? I don't know, indeed. Yes, I saw him large as life, turning up the Lansdowne Road with a smart-looking girl by his side. Perhaps they mean to call later. No, they don't. I heard Tilney hallooing to a man they were going as far as Wick Rocks. I don't understand it at all. Miss Tilney promised. My dear one, in this false world, people often make promises they have little intention of keeping. Remember, we are your true friends. We keep our promises. Yes. But what if they should come after all? My dear little scatterbrained sister, haven't you just heard Thorpe tell us? They're halfway to Wick Rocks. Then perhaps I should come with you. Please, Miss Morland. <sighs> Goes very nice, doesn't she? Smooth as silk. How do you do, sir? Scoundrel! <laughs> Pleasant old gentleman. Mr. Allen. Yes, and so good natured. And rich as Croesus, or so I hear. I believe Mr. Allen is very rich. And no children at all? No, none. But you're quite a favourite there, I gather. Mr. and Mrs. Allen are very kind to me, yes. Ever since I was a baby. Excellent, excellent. Oh, Miss Tilney! Stop! S stop now! It's Miss Tilney and her brother! Let me help to pay if I try to stop him now! Stop, Mr. Allen! It's Thor. too late! Well, I'll get down. Whoa! How could you deceive me so? Well, what if I did? Where would you rather be in a spanking gig driving to Blaze Castle or trailing about in the dirt with some canting prig of a parson? Mr. Tilney is not a canting prig. And you have made it seem as if I broke my promise to them. Whoa there. Look here. Miss Morland. I might not have been completely straight with you, but I had good reason. You think of your brother's happiness and Isabella's. They couldn't go off unchaperoned. And I was thinking of you, too. I'm not altogether happy to see you with the Tilneys. The whole family has a terrible reputation, something very strange about the mother's death. You can't mean... We must be careful when making new acquaintances. We're not all as honest as you and I. Huh? But Mr Tilney and his sister have been so kind to me. Truly. Sorry, Miss Morland, if I have caused you any distress, but you can set it all right tomorrow. Let's at least try and enjoy ourselves today. Damn it, I've been looking forward to driving you out more than anything. Come on, what do you say? Very well. Oh. Anything all right, Thorpe? Absolutely. Walk on. Sheep. 
please. It's just a spot of rain. It'll clear up in no time. Thorpe, we'd better go back. Your sister thinks so, too. We're not halfway to Blaze Castle. Very well, as you wish. It's all one to me. Honestly, if your brother hadn't such a damn beast to drive, we'd been at Blaze this half hour gone. Will you move your sheep? I need to turn. Come on, girl. Lord, what would the men think if they could see us now? How can I ever face the Tonys again? Now, you mustn't be cross with John, dearest one. Do you know he told me he liked you better than any girl he had ever seen? And he thinks you're the prettiest girl 